Today, I'm on the build site and I'm thinking about next steps after we're done with what we're about to do, which is the decks need to go on around the same time as the eaves are being built. So the deck ledger is something that I'm having a little bit of an issue with. Uh, there's mainstream ways of doing this, but there's specialty ways that I know must be out there. And so when people are in trouble, they should turn to someone who is an expert in doing this for a second opinion. And the person I'm turning to today is Matt Reisinger of YouTube's Build Show. Matt, thanks very much for being here. Hey, Corbett. How's it going, man? Good, dude. Sorry, I had to finish up something out. Okay. How's the, uh, can you see me okay? Or is it yes. Too We've talked about this house before. You've given me some uh, off the record advice and I wanted to put you on the record today because one of your videos that I refer to a lot is your deck video. And it talks about the deck connections. Now on this house that we're designing, and let me share my screen here real quick. We've modeled it in 3D before we started uh, building just to make sure that we knew what we were talking about because obviously I'm not a professional builder like you. So we've got a balcony on the front and a deck on the back here that you can see. And the detail for attaching this thing is getting a little hairy. So here's what I need to do. I've got my foundation wall. I've got three inches of rock wool insulation outside of a dimple board that's for drainage. I've got two inches of rock wool insulation above grade uh, and then my rain screen. And what I need to do is take this deck and attach it to the house. Uh, this is called the ledger and this is called the rim and we need them generally to be pretty close to each other. So the way that most builders are gonna do it is just slamming the, in, the ledger right up to the sheathing. So I've got a half inch gap between my ledger board and my rim board. And I've gotten rid completely of my exterior insulation. It's not my favorite. So what I saw on your video which was really helpful for moisture control, which is a big part of home performance, is this, these deck spacers that are gonna create a half inch air gap or an inch, whatever we wanna use, between the uh, ledger and the rim board. But where I'm coming up against an issue is if I've got a little cavity that I'm creating that's bottomed by insulation and topped by insulation, basically I've got a little cave there it's not actually a ventilation gap anymore. Now it's just a space that the sun is never gonna shine into and I won't ever be able to find out what's going on in there. <laughs> so what I'm wondering is, what have you done in this situation? So Corbett, I wouldn't do that first detail because you don't want an air gap that doesn't have airflow at the top and the bottom. Uh, and so you don't wanna trap that back at the sheathing. Um, the thought is good, but that execution's hard. So what I would do instead uh, and is what I did on a perfect wall house a couple years ago that I built where we had three inches of exterior insulation on the house and where the deck ledger was going to be attached. What we did was we made some one foot sections of two by 10, which is the deck ledger size. So we cut a bunch on the chop saw at one foot and we put two of them together, sandwiched and then lag bolted that into the, uh, uh, into the house. And we only put those on a, uh, I can't remember what the uh, engineering showed, but I think it was on five foot on centers, let's say, or uh, maybe they were more like eight foot on centers. Either way, we had these blocks on the wall, but not continuous. One block here, one block there, one block down there. So then we could run our exterior insulation continuous and not all of the ledger, but most of the ledger uh, was insulated. And then we attached our ledger board to that. That also allowed me to get my waterproofing uh, on those two buys uh, correctly and flash those in. And I used um, a uh, uncured rubber product from Carlisle called the uh, Elastoform flashing. Okay. And that's, that's a really flexible type of flashing that allowed me to tuck it up underneath my WRB, flash around those box blocks, any water that came down would come in and around. And then the face was open to accept a lag uh, or a timber lock from the ledger that was uh, going to go on there. And then the insulation was continuous. One thing you could do if you wanted to as well is put a little sandwich of uh, some uh, more compressible resistant insulation like XPS mm -hmm. uh, in that block as well. So you could, you could cut a, uh, let's say, uh, inch and a half thick XPS and then put your 
next layer of one foot two by 10 on there and then attach your ledger to that. And then you'd, you'd at least have some thermal break because you're in uh, climate zone four or five where you are. Yeah, it's not that bad, but it's just something that I'm, I'm wanting to make this thing as perfect as possible. And since I'm spending so much time trying to get this insulation right, like an entire 40 foot section of ledger was really making me crazy. Yeah, well, you can get, you can knock that down by at least 25% by, uh, uh oh, did I lose you there for a second? Sorry about that. Yeah, I had a call right there. Um, you could knock down at least 25% of that by just doing those double two by tens every, uh, you know, let's say six foot on center, five foot on center. You might need to check with your engineer depending on how much weight uh, you're talking about. Yeah. But if you lag those in thoroughly, there's not a lot of, uh, it's not a lot of potential for, for issue there. Awesome. And if I had the chance to finish out with the rain screen and then clad behind the ledger altogether so that then the ledger starts a half inch out from all of that stuff, would that be better? No. Um, yes and no. What you could actually do is put your deck spacer. I would put those double two by tens right up against your shear wall, whatever you're using mm -hmm. currently. So that, so those double two by tens are nice and, uh, uh, nice and solid against the house. And then I would space off from there by a half inch so that your next board has got a little bit of, uh, um, a little bit of airflow because those double two by tens, you want those solid and you're going to flash those in with some type of good flashing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in front of that would be a, a smart place to add that air gap so that your rain screen is at the front of the uh, wall and not the back of the wall. Right. Of course. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, chiming in on that. Now I feel a little bit better now that I've got the good information that's mainstream information and I've got the custom information because of course it's like this predictive building science is great until you come up against a detail that is a little bit weirder than what you've seen. Uh, yeah, so uh, your, uh, your perspective on that. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Definitely, man. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for having me on your channel too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll, I'll see you at uh, an event one of these days so we can do some filming together. Yeah, I'll see you at IBS or, you know, if you ever make it out to the Home Performance uh, Conference. But for my audience, if you haven't seen The Build Show with Matt Reisinger, go over to his channel right now because there's a ton of videos. He makes way more than I do, for example. So, Thanks, Gorbett. Thanks again, Matt. Appreciate it, man. Have a great day. All right, buddy. Catch you later. Thanks. Talk to you soon.